Oh shit. Here we go. Today we're finna be talking about them addicted cheese eaters. Ha <laughs> ha, Dom the best. Finna be this way till I EOS. Take it how you want, nigga. Yeah, I'm a pro. Fuck around, I'll bust your lot while you're at Vizzo. I hate to be this way, but I live for the moment. Waking up every day, show me an opponent. Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks. So much pool, I can even start you from the box. You don't wanna pay rent? Got me bent. Got lax on deck, your money was well spent. Vultures on the prowl, so don't try testing. Step two, cause violent first steps, finessing. You a hold down man? Suitcase this. My cell phone and my charger don't walk with a limp. Get it knocked off or missing? You gon' get it. Next time I see yeah, she gonna leave airlifted. What's up, y'all? You already know, man. K for all TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and do me that solid favor. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe button, and also make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're finna be talking about rats. Yeah. Whiskers. Rats. Now I know all the commotion going on about certain YouTubers that are rats and everything like that, but that isn't what we talk about. We talk about actual rats. You know the little furry ones? The ones that people feed the snakes. You know, the ones that eat cheese, we're going to be talking about them, okay? I had a lot of experience with them while I was in prison due to the infestation of rats that they had on the compound. So I'm going to be sitting here and I'm going to be breaking it down. I'm going to let y'all know how it feels to actually live with rats. Now, for those that don't know, when you get put in prison, you can't control the type of environment that is around you. And what I mean by that is I mean how dirty it is, what's inside a prison, what ends up landing in prison, who you end up being bunkies with, you can't control none of this stuff. If y'all been here for a while, then y'all remember a long time ago I did a video on how we were infested with cockroaches and I actually showed the remedy of how we catch roaches and we get them out of our cell for the time being, right? Now, when it comes to these rats, it's unreal because like the size of these rats aren't the size of a normal rat that you will see somewhere on the streets. Unless you're in New York somewhere and them shits is like the size of a chihuahua. You feel me? Now, when I was at Calhoun, which is my first main camp I landed at, we had rats. And the way the rats were there was totally different than how it was when I was in confinement at Charlotte CI. We'll get into that next. But I'm going to tell you about Calhoun first. When I was at Calhoun, the rats that we had there, you'd be sitting in the chow hall eating your tray. And... You just see, you know, we have a half wall that everybody stands on the other side of when they're standing in line to get their tray. As you're standing there, you have a wall that's probably like four foot tall that is right here next to you. And if you're on that other side of that wall, that means you're in line waiting to get your tray. You'll just see everybody jumping up and acting funny along that wall because a rat then came out of the kitchen inside of the kitchen area, not the chow hall part where you eat at, but it then came out of the kitchen where the food is actually made and put together and all that. It'll run out the door and run along that wall by these people's feet while they are all standing in line. You'll just be sitting there and you'll see everybody acting all crazy. And then sometimes they run around, they come to where you're at, they run where your feet are at and everything. And first couple of times you see it, everybody's like, oh shit, you know, everybody acts all crazy and everything because it's a rat, you know, and people you know, tend to be scared of little things like that. But then after you see them so much, you kind of get used to it and you don't really give a damn. That's how I was. I really didn't care. I used to be like, damn, look at that big ass rat. You feel me? Or in the flat where you actually throw your tray at when you're done eating to where it's going to go into the dish room, there's two flaps. There's the one you grab your tray from. That is where the line is, which is where they're serving the food and then you have the flap where you put your tray when you're putting it into the dish room i've seen where the trays are right there all piled up and jammed up because people just be pushing them there and ain't no one pulling them into the into the actual sink and stuff and i've seen big ass rats land on that and just sit there and eat whatever's left on these people's trays you know what i'm saying and it's crazy because i know prison ain't supposed to be enjoyable Prison ain't supposed to be fun at all. Everybody knows that, but it's inhumane to have you live a certain way, you know? And as much money as the government gets, as much money as the state gets, or whatever it may be, you would think that they got that shit set right. You would think that they have it to where, at the end of the day, you're not going to enjoy prison, but it isn't inhumane the way you're living. It isn't that case, you know what I'm saying? And... You think about it, even if you ain't scared of rats, if you ain't scared of mice or mouses or whatever it is, when you see one that is 
like this damn big, like not even exaggerating, like the size of a chihuahua. When you see one like that, you feel me? That shit gonna make you be like, oh shit, it gonna make you think twice because if that shit bites you, you feel me? You gonna be like, man, I know that shit gonna hurt. That shit gonna take a chunk out of you. You feel me? And it's more scared of you than you are it, you know? But when I was at Calhoun, the major place that we had rats was, was inside the kitchen. And even when I worked inside the kitchen, I only worked there for literally like five days inside the kitchen before I landed in confinement for a phone. But them five days I worked in there, I remember the people that worked in the kitchen, not just the inmates, but the, the officers that had to like keep an eye on everybody and the actual kitchen staff. They'd like try to lock the rat in there and like hide them. Like if they're running around where the damn vegetables are being cut up at, you feel me? And they'll try to like guide them to, to land into the CFO room. CFO, which is RDP, Religious Diet Program, is like for people who get a different tray than regular trays. You know, they get some different shit because they got a different diet going on. And they usually have that area like caged off, fenced off on its own because they get these little juice packs and these little things of milk and they don't want inmates stealing them and, and you know, hauling them back to the dorm and selling them and stuff. So they have those secured like in its own area. I've seen the kitchen staffs lock rats in there and, and put a lock on that shit. Same thing with the, the walk-in fridge. I've seen them lock them in there and everything and try to hold the door shut, like trying to capture the rat, but not physically, just like they're scared shitless of it, you know? And you would think there's ways to catch them and get rid of them and stuff like that, which they never really actually tried to do. You feel me? This was when I was at Calhoun. Now... When I got to Charlotte, it was a different ball game when it came to these rats, all right? For anyone who's ever did time at Charlotte CI, especially if you did time in confinement, you will know what I'm about to say is 100% facts. Them rats inside of confinement are no joke. And it's like they're starving, they're hungry, and they are patient because the moment the lights go out, here they come. And you could literally be sitting on your, your door like this, staring out your door, and you could be looking over here or looking over there to where these big old like exhaust pipes come out of the wall at inside the corner of the quad. And there's probably like a gap about this big from where the pipe goes up and goes into the wall. You could see the moment they dim the lights, boom, they stick their head out. That's it. They stick their head out like this. That means, up. Oh, it's about that time. And then they come running down them pipes and they go cell searching. They go from cell to cell, literally. Your first time in confinement, you're going to be thinking like, damn, why do all these cells have all this shit jammed under the bottom of their door? You know, kind of like back in the day when you go stay at a hotel and they say, ain't no smoking in the room and, you know, you smoke weed and shit. So, you know, people would like grab the towel and, you know, jamming under the door and shit, try to prevent the smoke from getting out. Well, when you go into confinement at Charlotte, there's going to be people that have shit stuffed under their door. And it ain't like you got a seat back there, so it ain't like it's cold. Or it isn't like, you know, you're, you're going to feel like a breeze or feel good back there. So you want all the air you can get. That little, that little area under your door is a lot. And you'll notice that at nighttime... Right before when lights are out, everybody will start jamming shit under their door. Whether it's a towel, you know what I'm saying? Or I've seen people use their pill sheets, which is like a it's like a sheet and it's got just individual slots of like their pills, whether it's water pills or for high blood pressure or whatever it may be. They get sheets of them and then you gotta push the pill out and pop it out the back. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's got like a little flo fo uh, foil behind it. So when you pop each one out how you want, and they get they get trays of them, like to where when they go down there to medical and pick them up, they get like 12 sheets. There might be 25 in each sheet. They use those as stacks and shove them under the door also. Or books or whatever you can get your hands on because nobody wants the rats to come in their room at night. And just because the rat's like that damn big doesn't mean he can't fit under that door. You know what I'm saying? And they're known to do what they got to do and get in however they got to get in. You feel me? So my first time in confinement, when I seen all this shit shoved under people's doors, you know, I'm like, the hell, you know, like, 
what do they think someone's going to flood it? Because if someone floods it, if you're on the bottom tier and someone floods it, or if you're like, or if someone on the top tier floods it, you know, the water is going to go in into your cell. So people try to cover there, you know, just in case, but it ain't why they do it randomly at nighttime. They do that for the rats. And you'll see them coming down, like I said, and they run around the top tier like they own that shit. They be running all along the top of the poles of the railings. They go up and down the stairs, all that shit. And it got to the point to where I eventually caught one. You feel me? And I've told this a long time ago. His name was Oatmeal. But it makes you think you're losing your mind because I spent so much time in confinement that when the lights are out, when they come into your room, you'll be laying down. And when you see one, you'll see them and they move so quick and quietly at night that he's like right here. And then before you even blink, he's there. And then he's there, he's there, he's there. And then before you realize it, he's gone. So you're like, and it's nighttime. You feel me? It's dark in the cell. So it's like you just see bomb, boom, bing, bang, gone. And then you're like, hell no. Nah. Then you'll be telling your bucket, boy, I think I seen a rat in the room last night. And you don't really know if it is. You see what I'm saying? Because... I've been laying there in my cell, dozing off, and I'd wake up and look, and in the cells we have these little half tables. It's like a piece of metal that come out the wall, and there's like a, uh, depending on where you're at, like usually jails, but not prisons. Jails usually have like a, like a, like a spot for you to sit down at. You know what I'm saying? Like it might have like a stool coming out the ground. You know what I'm saying? To where you could sit and you can write on that thing. You know what I'm saying? Some prisons have it. Some prisons don't. But you all of a sudden, you'll op open your eyes and look. And then on the seat or on the table will be the rat just standing up on his two feet. Like looking around, smelling. And then you see him. And when you look, bam, 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 you see him gone. So they're so quick and quiet that it starts playing mind tricks on you. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened to me every time I seen one in my cell. And it was so bad at Charlotte that I used to get a lot of canteen sent to me. People on the, uh, you know, on the, on the compound, they would send me canteen, you know, chips, soups, honey buns, pickles, tuna, anything you can name I had while I was in the box. Even got chicken on chicken day when they don't even feed confinement chicken. I used to get styrofoams of chicken while on chicken day, you know. Used to get loaves of bread from, from the kitchen, all types of shit. So it's bad to wear... The, se the, the, the slabs that you're sleeping on, like the top bunk, if you lift your mat, you got the metal slab and there's holes in the slab, like, like holes, like the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit smaller. And they do that so that way if you flood the room or if anything like that goes on, it can't drown you from on the top bunk or the bottom. There's holes to where it's going gonna, it's gonna to run through. It's going to be able to fall down, right? So... I literally had to take my canteen bag with all my canteen in it and pull the strap of it, the handles, through the hole of the top bunk over the edge and tie it. So at the end of my bunk, when I'm laying down, my canteen bag is hanging and dangling on the bottom of my bunk. Like So when my bunk is laying there and he looks straight ahead, above him at his feet is my bag hanging and swinging. And we've woke up in the middle of the night to a rat on top of my bag. You feel me? And I only put it up there because, like I said, I spent a lot of time in the box. So I already had problems with the rats to where I needed to put my canteen somewhere. What if it eat my shit and I ain't going to have nothing to survive off back here? You feel me? And I remember they broke in because you could put them under your bed, like under the slab. And... You, each one of y'all got your own little, you know, your own little cubby under there. And they'd sneak in so quietly and they'd get your shit. You'll wake up the next day and there might be six busted open soups. It isn't like they open one soup and just sit there and, nah, 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 and eat that one soup. No, they, we woke up one time and there was like six soups busted open. And we didn't even hear them. They did that shit while we were sleeping. You know, you'll just all of a sudden picture the noise of like a chip bag. But picture like... Someone trying to open it slowly, like, and you got to catch it while you're sleeping. You know, you'll hear it a little bit, but you're not thinking nothing of it. 
And then when you catch it, you'll try to get up. And shit, it's dark in here. You can't see them. So it isn't like you're going to jump down and then got your ass. You know, you don't know what the hell that mouse or rat's going to end up doing to you. You feel me? That shit might, he might win that night. So after all the situations and shit that I went through with them eating my soups, getting into my packs of cookies, I had loaves of bread. My bunky had bread under his bed too. I had so many loaves that I'm like, here, bitch, you might as well keep some of these, bro. I don't, I don't eat all this shit. They'd get in, bite a hole in there, and they'd eat through like four or five pieces of bread. And, and then you'd catch them, and then they'd, they'd be gone. You feel me? And it was bad to where like, they'd be on the top tier walking. And if something came their way, or somebody, like an officer, was walking their way while a, while a, while a, while a rat's running this way on the top tier. If an officer happens to be doing rounds with his flashlight, and he's walking that way... Them shits will jump off the top tier and put their arms out, look like they flying, and they'll land on their stomach down there on the bottom tier and just take off running and, and then go right up under someone else's door. Whoa. They, it isn't like they take the time or move slow when they go in these people's room. That's how you know how comfortable they are. Them shits are like, swoop, into that room. And then they'll come out, swoop, 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 run down, four cells later, swoop, into that room. Run across the hall, swoop, swoop, into that room. So they do it so fast to where that's their house. They know how it is where everything is. They know how to get around. They, they, they're so comfortable and familiar with the area that they just do it so quickly from cell to cell. You know what I'm saying? And one night, I was like, man, I'm finna catch one of these. You know, and I, and I was like, I got an idea for it so fast. I said, I'm gonna catch one of them. And I ended up catching them. And what I did is I rolled my blanket up real good on the side of the blanket. Like picture you rolling a blanket up so it's just like a long roll now. I got my fishing string, which is what you use when you make it out of either. There's these certain strings that are in your, your actual blues, your uniform, that are stronger than the rest of the string. You know, you can use the string in a towel just like there's different ones that are inside of a sheet than the normal strings. A lot of them pop when they're like this long, but then you got other ones that'll just unthread and you could just keep pulling as long as you're doing it. You know, the longer you get, the less you gotta tie to another one, you feel me? So there's certain threads, like when you when you get your blues and you, and you, you, you flip them inside out, along down on the inside of your leg, like on the side of your thighs, you'll see the strings that are going like zigzag. You pop that one at the tip top, and then you pop it at the bottom by the ankle, you should be able to pull it straight out. It should be able to come straight out, and the next thing you know, you got you about a 15-foot string, one string. You feel me? So anyways, tied it around one end of the roll of the uh, blanket, tied it around the other roll of the blanket, and me and my bunkie were sitting there. I'm like, man, I'm going to catch this shit. Watch. He's like, Fraud, you tripping. You ain't finna catch one of them. My whole goal was to trap them in the room. So I actually put my roll... You feel me? I put my roll above my door. My blanket was above the door. Okay, so you picture a cell door and you got the little rectangle window that you look out of. And then you got your flat that they open on the bottom to give you your tray. I got my blanket up there like that. And I got fishing line, not just tied around it, but I got fishing line that you can't see because it's nighttime. You know, even if he's seen it, the fucking mouse could probably walk on it and run on it. But I had it. I had it. And I just waited. I said, I'll wait. You know, hopefully he comes in here within the hour or so. I'll just sit here and I'll just lay in my bed, you know, and just chill. You know, not to mention I had my MP when I was in there. So I was listening to the music and shit and just vibing. You feel me? A lot of people don't be having the MP when they're in prison inside the box. I had mine. So I'm back there just listening, jamming. And then next thing you know, I turn it off. I still got the headphones on. I used to sleep with my headphones on in you know sometimes i fall asleep with the music on or i'll just pause that shit but it's like a secured little more quietness because you got you know some shit in your ear and when i had them off i heard the noise the moment i heard the noise i opened my eyes and i look and i just seen it running along the wall in the room like going from the door towards like the little half table i was telling you all about i just seen them wham 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 once i seen that i yanked and the damn blanket fell. Once the blanket fell, I needed it to fall in front of the door because then it would have been like it blocked the area for him to run out of. You know what I'm saying? That was the whole, that was my whole goal was to block him and trap him in there. 
Tried that shit. Once that, once it fell, I jumped up, went over there, and I stuffed that shit in the door, like made sure there was no areas for him to get out, and I jumped on the toilet, which was at the end of the bed, where kind of like where my canteen bag hung. I jumped on the toilet, got on the sink, got up there on my bunk, and laid down, because I couldn't see him. You feel me? I don't want that damn rat on me. You feel me? So... I had to wait till breakfast. When breakfast time came around, you feel me? When the breakfast time came around, they turned the lights on. I told my bunkie. I said, hey, bunkie. He said, what's up? I said, boy, I trapped him, boy. He's in here somewhere. He said, stop lying, frog. I said, I swear on everything. He said, what do you mean? I said, he fell for it. He fell for the oatmeal. Because I had oatmeal, my dog downstairs under me, sent me. I used that as the bait. That's why I named him oatmeal when I caught him. And it was funny because... Sure enough, after I get off the bunk, when they give us the trays and shit, I look. Remember, they don't open your doors when you're in the box. They just open the flat and give you your tray. So I get off the set, off my uh, slab, and boom, get my tray, put it up there, and I look. Sure enough, he wasn't in our cubbies that are like connected to the bottom bunk. There's like a space, probably like this big, before the floor. He was in the back corner, like behind all of our shit. Like he was back there. And uh, I remember I got my fishing pole. For those that don't know what that is, that's what you use when you fish also. You get pieces of paper. And like when a piece of paper is like this, you start at the corner and you roll it real real tight, real skinny from like corner that way. Not, not like sideways, but like that way. And then it rolls it and then it gets it real long and then you connect it to another one, another one, another one. Before you know it, you got you like a 10-foot pole. And then at the tip, you bend the tip so it's like a hook put a staple on there and when people fish and stuff like that you stick your pole out there and with your fishing hook you'll be able to grab their string their 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 fishing line and you'll be able to boom pull it in your cell i grab one of those and with the poking at the rat like i seen them in the corner trying to get them to come from under you can't fit under there so it's like you got to get them from under there he came he ran that boy ran all by the toilet ran he tried to run straight for the door you feel me when that happened, I said, give me your blanket. I grabbed my bunkie's blanket and threw it on him. Threw the blanket on top of that boy. Caught him. Ended up having him. Caught his ass. We had him. I kept him in the same fucking canteen bag. I took all my canteen out. And this time I put it on top of my slab, right? On top of the slab, like at the footrest, you just lift the mat up and I had all types of goodies there, like all types of snacks, food and shit. That same canteen bag was hanging there and the, the, the rat, oatmeal, he lived in that. So we had him, like I kept him as a pet and to me it was the coolest thing ever, you know. Especially you always hear the myth of how to train them and stuff. Like going to prison, they say the way you train like a, a rat, if you catch one, is you throw them in the toilet. You throw them in the toilet, they're going to freak out, flip out and all this stuff like that. And they're feeling like they're going to drown. And then you grab them out of there. You feel me? And then it may take a couple times. It may take a, a bunch of times. But it's going to remember you saved them from drowning. So that's how people train rats or mice or whatever you want to call it inside a prison. They'll literally throw them in the toilet. When he's about to fucking croak, they grab him out. Pet them, let them know, hey, you feel me? Look, boy, I just saved your ass. You feel me? And then they'll, and then if the mouse still won't, if he still is trying to get away and all that, they'll throw him in there again, and they keep doing it, you know? And then, and then before you know it, you'll see inmates that have a mouse in their pocket or sitting on their shoulder, won't try to run away or nothing. They, like, bonded. They earned the trust of that human. You feel me? And the, the, that rat, you know, earned, got the trust from the human as well, you know? So it's like both ways you feel me like so me i was like man i don't know if that shit gonna work you feel me i threw him in the toilet and when i threw him in the toilet that boy ran around the toilet boy and was trying to you know there isn't like there's a lid to the toilet where you could throw him in there and then you know hold it down to where he's got it you know you got to at least get him to the stage where he's about to drown before you can grab him and save him man i threw him in that toilet man that motherfucker hit that water jumped out that shit so quick I had to catch him again inside the cell. You feel me? I got tired of doing it. You know what I'm saying? So he wasn't really tame to where I could just put him on my shoulder or nothing like that. And, you know, you think about it like, who the hell wants a pet rat? When you're in prison and you ain't got access to certain things, man, the littlest shit be cool as hell. That's why people got pet spiders. People got pet lizards. People got pet birds, owls, bats. 
You know, there's all types of different shit that people actually will have as a pet. You know, you, it depends on what institution you're at and what they're known for. There's people that got kittens, believe it or not. You feel me? Like, think about it. My old hold down man, Bam. When Bam went to confinement, when Bam went to confinement, for K-Frog TV, right? When he finally went to the box and they ran down on him and they called his ass and he felt famous, he was on the work squad working outside the gate and he had a pet baby hog. He had a pet hog. They caught him with a baby hog tied up outside out of the compound somewhere. Every single day when he'd go to work, he'd go there and he had a pet hog. And they caught him with that shit. You see, so you never know what people have as a pet. So catching that damn rat was cool as hell. And not to mention, the guards at Charlotte CI, if you've been locked up there before, then you know this is true. The guards at Charlotte CI would tell you they'll give you an extra tray if you catch and kill one of them rats. That's how bad it is. That's how they know that they can't even get rid of them. They see them at night. You know what I'm saying? They be inside the officer station looking and chilling and shit all night. And then they see a rat come out and run and go in that cell. And they're like, oh shit, look, a rat just went in Frog's room or such and such's room. You feel me? They know, boy, them rats is out there where we at. They ain't out there where the guards are at. They're not in there. They ain't in the bubble. They out there where we at. You feel me? And when I called them, I remember I showed them to the officer and all. He's like, oh, you, going, you, you want that extra tray? I said, nah, I can't do it with the old oatmeal. After I called him, I was like, nah, he's like, oatmeal? I said, yeah, that's his name. I called him with some oatmeal. I'm going to keep him. He's my dog. And when I got transferred, I left oatmeal with my bunkie when I was getting transferred. Of course, I'm not going to bring him with me. But he literally did box time with me. You feel me? So it's like I was cooler with that damn pet rat than I was the officers. And then I, then I was other inmates. Went through hell to catch them, you know. I ain't wished no harm on them. You know, I did want to try to train them by trying to drown them a couple times. But other than that, you know, it was it was the accomplishment of the mission of catching the rat. That's what was so fun. And it didn't just happen overnight, okay. Like this incident spree, I'm telling y'all how they'd come in and, you know, and he'd eat my shit and all that. This was like months at a time, like... You know, there's so many cells that it isn't like he'd come in your single cell every night. He might come in three, four nights in a row, more than one time. You feel me? But my room, he was known to come into because I had a lot of canteen. People don't really have that much canteen back there in the box. You think about it. You're only allowed to order five non-food items, four food items. You feel me? It's either that or it's the other way around. It might be five non-food, no, five food, four non-food. You can only order like honey buns, the yellow lace chips, Doritos, cheese squeezes, peanut butter squeezes, you know, stuff like that. You're not allowed to order soups. You're not allowed to order tuna, like things that are actually on the canteen. There's only certain things you can order. You feel me? And I was getting duffel sent to me from people on the compound. Feel me? Or I have my own card also. I could swoop, slide my card out, and they'll go hit the window and come back and give me my whole duffel. You see what I'm saying? So I had a lot of food. So them rats that were going around nickel and diamond and shit for so long, they done got a playmaker in there now, boy. They're like, oh, shit, we finna, instead of us nickel and diamond, boy, we finna just go over here and we finna hit the penthouse. And that's what would happen. They'd come in my cell more than usual. You see what I'm saying? And... The time that it took me to finally want to catch one. And like, you know what? I'm tired of them eating my shit because I felt like every time they'd, they'd hit my shit and get in my shit, it wasn't like right when I got a fresh duffel. I felt like I got to enjoy my shit for a couple days. And then, you know, once I start getting to where there's less than half left, I feel like that's when they start hitting me. Like when I felt like I would need it the most. Or like I want a honey bun. I go, look, my honey bun shit's ripped open. Or I'll wake up in the morning and that shit's wedged under the door and there's honey bun everywhere. Like, God damn, they tried me, bro. Like, yo, not only did I eat your shit, but you finna pick the little bit I left up. You feel me? That, that, that's how it was. So it was like, man, I'm gonna catch one. That was my whole goal. I'm like, man, I gotta do what I gotta do to catch one. And literally, after being in confinement for probably 65 to 70 days... I finally caught oatmeal. You see what I'm saying? You know, a lot of people wouldn't even try to catch it. They would just be like, man, the hell with that. Me, personally, I feel like trying to catch the rat 
made my time in the box go by. You know what I'm saying? Literally, because it's my mind isn't on the time. My mind's focused on something else. And the more you keep your mind on something, the less you think about what's really going on. You feel me? So them, them 70 days didn't feel like no 70 days because my mind was focused on catching that rat. I know I done swapped bunkies a couple times and everything since then. And every bunkie I got thought I was tripping. They're like, man, that boy crazy. That boy in here trying to catch a rat. But hey, when I caught that shit, the one bunkie I had, guess what? That boy was shocked. Like, boy, you did that, frog. And we had us a pet, oatmeal. You see what I'm saying? For real. Like, he was, he was cool as hell. You know, you don't think of that. You know, me growing up, rats were food for snakes and stuff. You feel me? So, like, for me to catch one, you know, like, physically catch one with the little things that I was entitled to catch. You know, I had to catch with. Like, I, I, I had to, like, think of a way to catch him. You know, it ain't like I had a trap to, no, I didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? I literally had a blanket, fishing line, another blanket, oatmeal. You know, that shit's like, I literally had to lure him into coming to me and got your stupid ass. Like, that shit was the funnest shit to me while I was in confinement. Like, that shit made them first 70 days fly by. If anybody's ever been locked up anywhere where they had rats at or any type of animals like that they was infested with like how i did a video a long time ago about the german roaches we had them shits was everywhere you feel me if y'all have ever been locked up anywhere and you know someone that had a pet or you know y'all had the problems like i had with animals drop it in the comment section i'm pretty sure people want to know about it because i know different places have different things you got different atmospheres different weathers different climates so i know there might be something else somewhere else that we ain't got down here and it might be vice versa you know, down here, a lot of people play with spiders. You know, the regals. Them shits are cool as hell. You feel me? You won't know that. I didn't know that until I went to prison and had to deal with them. You see what I'm saying? Until I went to prison and started seeing all these jumping spiders. We call them shit eaters. You feel me? They're just like regular jumping spiders. They're all in the dorm. They be all everywhere. Like, you'll be in your room and they'll be jumping around and shit. And then you're like, damn, I hate these shits. People got regals to eat the jumping spiders. See? So even though the jumping spiders wasn't like what everybody favored as the pet, them shits was on the food chain to the regals. So a lot of people would get regals and catch the jumping spiders that are in their room or catch flies and put them in there for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I literally learned how to catch flies while in prison just to feed my spiders. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. Like, they got these little bags, okay? It's like a bag. It's like a cookie bag. You know what I'm saying? It looks like a, it looks like a uh, like a like a sandwich bag, not the ones with the the zipper or whatever, not the Ziplocs, but just the sandwich one. And you literally, you literally like put a open you you make it look like it's a bowl. You, you 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 like hold it to where like you pull the bag through your fingers right here, but you open it up real wide in the back right here, right? So what you'll do is when you open it up like this. You're going to open it up real wide like a ball, right? And say that flies on the wall, you're going to grab the, since you opened up the as, as wide as it will open, you're going to stick it over them. They're going to fly into it. When they fly there, you then turn your hand like that. Swoop. So then now you got the ball part the, the, of, the, of the bag in front of you, but then the little area that you clamp behind you will have the fly flying in it. Like I never learned, I, I didn't know this, and I learned that at my last camp. I learned that at DeSoto. You got people walk around trying to catch flies and shit. You see what I'm saying? Like there's certain things that you're gonna learn to do, and it kills time before you know it, man. I spent three days trying to get this spider something to eat. That's three days that are gone. You see what I'm saying? And for me, rats was one of the main things that I hated. Still hate them to this day. I don't fuck with rats, not the furry ones. The, like I said, those are snake food and definitely not the ones that be telling on people. You feel me? So I ain't really entitled to learn that in prison, but I did. I learned and caught a rat named Oatmeal because of how bad the rats were in there. That's crazy. But anyways, y'all, I'm going to wrap this video on up. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Like I always say, y'all make sure y'all hit that like and subscribe button on the way out if you ain't hit it on the way in. Y'all forgive me that I took a couple days off. You know, we got bad weather over here in Florida right now, so it's been kind of hard to record. It ain't really hard to record. It's just, you know, I, I, I want it to be as professional as possible. You feel me? Like right now it's raining and thundering and shit. Y'all can probably hear it a little bit in the background. But it's been real bad to where, like, you know, I don't want... 
you know, I don't want, I ain't doing no knockoff videos, you know, we're trying to do everything professional from, from now on, you feel me? But anyways, man, y'all drop in the comment section if y'all, if y'all had rats where y'all were locked up at. If you knew anybody that was locked up that had a certain pet, drop it in the comment section, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure people like to read it, I like to read it, so I know I'm not the only one, you feel me? But I appreciate it, like I always say, y'all make sure you quit them rats, squares, clowns, chomos, pedos, gunners, wannabe island boys, clout chasers, people who make up shit, hating because I wouldn't give them a shot out keep all them out your circle that's exactly what i do you feel me and i guarantee you this for anybody who ever ratted and you're known on youtube your name will never come out my mouth again you was a ghost you was a nobody you was a don't ever expect frog to ever mention your name again you feel me we don't we don't we don't condone that you know what i'm saying feels good to finally you know prove a point and toss that shit in the trash on to the next chapter but anyways, man, I appreciate y'all watching. Y'all already know, man, this the one and only Frog.